In this third part, what we're going to do is we're going to get the computer to first mimic the way you play rock, paper, scissors. And then if you can do that, and it can kind of, it knows the pattern that you always do paper, for example, it can go, well, first I'm going to mock you by mimicking you, and then I'm going to choose scissors every time you do paper. Um, well, scissors, I'm going to start playing scissors when you tend to play paper. That's when it makes sense. Um, and it should be unbeatable if uh, if it counts. But if you play enough games, over five games, you'll fluke it. But um, there's no way you're going to, like, even the tiniest lean or weighting towards scissors, this program will pick up on, and then it will do the even tiniest lean towards towards that to counteract your strategy. So um, what we're going to do here is I'm just going to see this is my guess where I'm guessing from these three so now instead of having random not choice I've imported this up here I'm gonna import choices okay I can just put an S in there you can import both if you want but I'm, I'm actually gonna not use the the choice anymore I'm gonna go choices because choices lets me wait a choice towards whatever I want um, so what I'm going to do here is just comment out this here. I'm not using choice anymore. Now I'm using uh, what? Now I'm just going to this. This is not part of the program. This this is just easy to explain. So a weighted guesses returns a list. That's the first thing. So you're not going to get a variable or a string back here or an integer. You're going to get a list. So you have to deal with that. Remember later on. Um, so you go random dot choices, or because we've gone from, we can just say choices, not choice, choices. Now, the name of your list that's still going to be listy mac list face, and then you go comma weights, and you can weight them as much as you want. So this one, I'm going to just go yeah, as as random as you would get. So one is just equally even, Stevens, no different. Zero means never choose this one. So it will never. If this is rock, it'll go yeah rock. Fair enough as a baseline paper it will never do and then do scissors 10 times more than rock what about scissors a thousand times more than rock and if you're Edward scissors hand and you've no other options you can just set this to pretty much infinity so um, there you go that's how this works what does the K do the K um, because you know it's it's a way to guesses it does this three times um, I mean if I did this it would give me uh, 10 guesses, most of which would be scissors. So it would produce a list of guesses, and I'd imagine that like they 90% of them would just be scissors of the of the 10 guesses. Okay. Now we only want one. Uh, you're not allowed like play rock paper scissors all at the same time. You you have to choose one. A list is no good. So. We're going to have to return the first item from this list. Um, and I'm just going to comment away this. Um, and this is what I'm, what I'm doing here. I'm saying this. Uh, so this, is, this was just for an example because it's easy to read. This is actually will work. The, the computer guess list, what it's going to do, it, it, its list of weighted guesses will be some choices from this list. All right, it's going to make some choices from this, but it's going to weight those choices. And it's going to weight them not in 1, 10. I could put the numbers in here, the actual hard coded numbers, but I know how many plays the player has done rock before, and I know how many papers. So I'm going to weight it according to the player's past thing. But wait a second, is that not going to cause an error because I haven't defined these? You're right, it will. And that's why up here, I've defined these, okay, up here. So, oh, quick edit, I forgot, to, I had to go back and say this in this video. I didn't explain where this came from. I originally had it as this, that it was working great, but the problem was, like in my example above, they start at zero, right, because I declare them at zero, which means the program didn't work because it never guessed any of them. It was a game of rock, paper, scissors, and I said, your turn, computer, and there was silence because they started off at zero. Zero in a waiting means zero probability of the computer playing your game. So 
Um, raw, I, raw, you could set them all to one here, and that would work. And I did that when I was like, oh, but then, then the total scores are kind of out by one. So I just added in here one to fix that. Now that uh, that error is uh, pre-squashed, um, I can just, I only want one. It's gonna be a list of one items, you know? It, that's totally fine. So that will give my that will give me a, a a list of guesses with one thing on the list, um, and I want the first thing in the list. Now look, I could set that to twenty. It'll, this will still work. Actually, I'm just gonna just just to show you, thirty four guesses. It doesn't matter because I'm actually only going to take the first item on that list. Remember, you count zero, one, two. Uh, you start from zero when you're counting on a list here. So that's the first item on the list. So that's all fine, uh, but one of the problems I had was just because of the way I did this in a kind of a slightly lazy way where I had a player counter, um, down here, it was resetting everything back down to zero. So even though briefly it was graphing in the middle, those weights were never any use because they were always flat zero, zero, zero. So I was testing this out and I was like why why do you never learn that I always do scissors oh yeah oh yeah it's because and the counts were, were there so what I did was just above those to, to to take a snapshot of these before they're reset to zero I just said player rock count snapshot is these and then you can go ahead to reset to zero now really what I should have done if I was doing this program again I wouldn't do this player points I would make a little list of rocks. I would make little bags, you know, called rock list, paper list, and I'd, I'd just use um, the inbuilt function to count how many items the list. You know, looking back at it, that would have been the way to do this program, not this weird variable thing. But anyway, that's what you call optimizing. <laughs> we can optimize things later on uh, in retrospect, um, and maybe version two. Um, but for right now, and don't forget, you have to declare these, and you can't just like make things up because. Uh, yeah, otherwise you're going to get a, an error there. So uh, I, I added a uh, declaration for each of those. And now this, this, should, this should work, and this will mimic, if I press, I'm just going to do scissors because it's easy to do. Scissors, 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 scissors. And you can see it starts off being a little bit random here. But as I get up to five, it goes, I notice that you've never done any of these. So it starts mimicking my scissors. Now, you could even increase... Uh, how much it does that if you wanted to you could even say I want you to like If I square it, it'll really cop on very so I could square each of these and it would immediately cop on but to be honest like It's fine. I guess that would be like the se a sensitivity thing um, I'll leave it as it is uh, So that works it now mocks me by doing like this is an impression of you silly human and it does you right so now that it does that all we have to do is add in a little switcheroo so it does the opposite here. And this is what I've done in this little block here. So I said, if it's about to do paper to mock me, because I always do paper, it goes, wait a second. If I know you're going to do paper, what am I going to do? I'm going to do scissors. So it's the CPU guess, the computer guess, just change it at the last moment. Paper to scissors. So now, if I am somebody who always, if I'm Edward Scissors Hands and I go play this program, it should notice that I always do scissors and start playing paper against or rock against me right so if I'm gonna go me scissors scissors it starts off doing paper and now you see the way it's starting to play rock even second guess is doing rock my scissors it rocks my scissors it rocks my scissors it rocks there you go um, and there's a bit of a like it's still it's it hasn't quite like it's not doing all extreme but there's the, you'll see a, a, a at enough games, you'll see a clear lean towards rock. And I can change my mind now, and I can just start playing, I can start playing rock by shaking this thing. And as I start playing rock, oh, it's, it's, it's just, a, it's too dim in here, so it keeps doing paper. I'm gonna start shaking the micro bit here to play rock. And what will happen is, as the rock counter goes up, it, it realizes that I'm now uh, the rock Johnson, and it's gonna throw uh, paper at me instead. Okay, so you see this paper counter going up now. It'll take a while because it's it's working on the total uh, so far. So I'll have to kind of undo all that bias so far 
to make the bar chart will have to catch up and then overtake and then it'll start leaning one way or the other. Do you know what I mean? So, and there you can see it's now starting to play paper against me. But there you go. Um, so there is a, a kind of computer that um, should, I guess, statistically be impossible to beat over a, a large number of games. Um, if you play it, as I said, in, if you play for five games, you'll probably fluke a victory, no problem. You've got even odds. Um, but the longer you play it, the more it will memorize your slight weightings towards one or the other. And it will lean the same amount, but in the opposite kind of guess direction to, um, you know, uh, which, which should, I guess, help it win. Because um, you won't know. You, like, if you make 200 guesses, you don't know what your bias is, but it does. It knows you better than you know yourself. So uh, there you go. Unless you unless you were to outsmart it, I guess by making a completely random generator, by just like throwing a chicken and a slice of toast, and then running over and like pouring, you know, and saying, well, I think wherever its beak lands uh, on a coordinate system, that's going to be my rock, paper, scissors guess. And then running over and uh, throwing like uh, a car tire into the sand and saying, however many grains of sand I pick up my first... <laughs> You know, something like that, like, like total random generator, you keep doing that. Which actually is a whole, like, industry of what is an actual, like, I think lava lamps are used to produce random, actual raw random numbers. Um, yeah, but there you go. All right, so that's it. That's the AI player created. Um, one other bonus thing we could do here is you could have a training mode here. We might, do, maybe we'll do, like, a part 3.5 here but we could do a a training mode where it, it like it's gonna this is how Danny tends to play rock paper scissors and instead of just saving the graph it saved these saves the it saved these to like a you know a, a CSV or some kind of like player waiting profile so you can at the start of a rock paper scissors game say who do you want to play against and it has a list in the database of past players like play against your teacher play against uh, Joe and it's because Joe has trained this it will actually notice that Joe always tiny bit goes towards scissors heavily towards rock and never does paper that's classic Joe do you know and you can kind of play against a a human player even though they're not there because statistically it'll replicate there the way they play there you go